Tonight, in this election, you, the American people, reminded us that while our road has been hard, while our journey has been long, we have picked ourselves up. We have fought our way back. And we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. Four more years, President Obama re-elected to a second term after a hard-fought battle with Governor Mitt Romney. And good morning, I'm Jenny Evans. This race for the White House had been close for months, but when it came down to it and voters hit the polls, the president was re-elected by a comfortable margin. In our red, white, and blue election coverage, President Obama came away with a big win in the Electoral College, getting over 300 with just 270 needed. The president clinched eight of the nine battleground states, including Wisconsin and Ohio. Last night, he delivered his victory speech in front of thousands in Chicago, saying the best is yet to come. Our economy is recovering. A decade of war is ending. A long campaign is now over. And whether I earned your vote or not, I have listened to you. I have learned from you. And you've made me a better president. Well, during his speech, the president said he looks forward to working with both Democrats and Republicans, including Mitt Romney. And late last night, Romney called the president to congratulate him. He graciously conceded after a long fought election. In the end, Romney lost his home state, his birth state, and too many battleground states. I so wish. I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction, but the nation chose another leader, and so Ann and I join with you to earnestly pray for him and for this great nation. Thank you, and God bless America. As for Romney's running mate, Paul Ryan, he'll be back in Janesville today. He'll take a few days off and then return to his job in Congress. Ryan won another term last night. Now, the other big race we've been following is Tammy versus Tommy. Last night, Democrat Tammy Baldwin became the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate in the state of Wisconsin, beating out her Republican opponent with 51% of the vote. She also becomes the first openly gay U.S. Senator elected to office. Well, the people's voice was heard tonight, Wisconsin. And come And come January, your voice will be heard in the United States Senate. Well, this Senate race was the most expensive in state history. Both candidates raised over $65 million. And it was a historic loss for former Governor Tommy Thompson. For the first time in his high political career, he lost a statewide race. A Thompson win would have given Republicans two Senate seats for the first time since the 1950s. Well, in Northeast Wisconsin, Republicans will hold on to the 8th District Congressional seat. Incumbent Republican Reed Ribble is the winner, beating Democratic challenger Jamie Wall. Now, this was Wall's second attempt at Wisconsin's 8th Congressional District. And the 6th Congressional District seat will stay with Republicans. Tom Petri was an easy winner over Democrat Joe Callis. Petri had held this seat since 1979. And that means Wisconsin Republicans have gained control of the Assembly and the State Senate. Democrats took back control after the recall elections in July. But with Dems now on the sidelines, Republicans will be able to pass pretty much any proposal. Among the issues Republicans hope to take up is loosening regulations on mining. And the fight over the Senate came down to the race in District 18. Incumbent Democrat Jessica King lost to her Republican challenger Rick Gudex. King was recently appointed this past year during the recall elections. Another major factor was the Senate race in the 12th District. It looks like Republican Tom Tiffany has declared victory over Democrat Susan Summer. Tiffany will fill the seat of Democrat Jim Holprin, who is retiring. But one familiar face will be back in the state Senate for Democrats. In the 30th district, incumbent Dave Hansen has won his fourth term. He beat out Republican challenger John Mako. And still ahead this morning, long lines at the polls. Find out just how many Wisconsin voters took full advantage of their rights. 
Plus, a controversial referendum on the books in Pulaski. Find out if voters decided to pass the $33 million idea.